Hey, it's Mike, and welcome back to the shop. In this episode, we're going to be joining the firebox uh, to the cook chamber itself. The firebox was built in, in other episodes, and you can go check those out on, on the, the website or the YouTube channel. So, uh, it's a 31 inch uh, long firebox, and it's 24 inches in diameter. And it's a whopper, it's 3 eighths of an inch thick, so it's, it's pretty heavy. Um, and it is going to set into this tank about eight inches. There's the, the cap on here or the head of this, this uh, cook chamber is about eight inches. And I'm going to go all the way up just about to the, to the vertical weld here, the, the cap weld. So uh, it will stick in about eight inches and that gives us, what, 25 inches sticking out. So not all of this is going to stick out. The trick is, though, how do we get it in the right position? So if you'll remember from our earlier episode, we extended our center lines, uh, our 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock, all the way around uh, the tank. And we came up with a center line right here. And that's a very precise center mark on the end of our tank right there. And we have some decisions to make at this point. Uh, how high are we going to raise our firebox in relation to the grate? Remember the grate uh, bottom of the grate is even with the bottom of the door, right? The door opening. But we're going to use one and, an, one and a quarter inch angle for our grate uh, framing, which is going to raise our grate one and a quarter inches off of the height of that door, which is, of course, the height of the center line. So this line here, GL, is our grate level. It's a one and a quarter inch higher than the center mark. So, it's a toss-up, uh, just like everything else. Uh, how high do we want this? We don't want it so high that we get extra heat or, or unwanted heat on the grate itself. Of course, in a direct flow, the, uh, the right side or this side of the cooker is gonna be very, very hot as this hot air wants to come out and then immediately rush to the ceiling of the, the tank. Uh, that grate right there just takes a, takes a beating. A lot of guys will put water pants, whatever else there, try to mitigate that, but that's just uh, the fact of a direct flow cooker. This area right here, probably the first eight, 12 inches, is just hot. It's just gonna be there. So, uh, if we come up too close to that grate though, we really increase the size of that hot area. If we go down too far, that hot area gets smaller, but then we start having other trade-offs like ground clearance. If we have it on a uh, um, uh, casters or rollers or something like that, or golf cart wheels or whatever on some sort of cart, then uh, the, the firebox is gonna be sitting lower. If we have it on a trailer, uh, that could be really problematic if your firebox is sitting too low, because then you're dragging. Uh, there's really no way to get this thing down uh, far enough uh, to get a long way away from that grate uh, without doing two things. One, you'll, you'll decrease the size of your throat. We don't want that. We want our air to flow as nicely as it can, so we want as big a throat, in my opinion, as we can get. Uh, and we don't want this sitting so far down uh, that it's likely to drag, cause ground clearance problems. Uh, but we don't want it so high that we have a, a significant hot spot right there. I have found, uh, through trial and error, that about two and a half to three inches down from grate level is kind of a sweet spot there. It's a compromise between ground clearance, between uh, this hot spot right there being so focused on that grate. And uh, another important factor is how high your door sits. Because uh, if you bring this firebox down to increase your ground clearance, then you, or to uh, increase your distance here, then ground clearance is gonna be an issue. The obvious answer to that is raise the whole unit up. Well, then the door gets so high that it gets dangerous trying to uh, put the door up against the door stops up there. You're liable not to get it completely against the stop and uh, you know it can come back and hit you. Uh, I speak from experience there, uh, operating a cooker that was just too darn tall, uh, too tall for me, and I'm right at six foot, so, uh, it was a very tall cooker. Uh, I thought that I had gotten the door all the way up. In fact, I hadn't. Uh, I started messing with the grate and the door came down and hit me in the head. Luckily that it didn't do uh, some serious damage, but that, that's a trade-off. You don't want the whole cooker being so high that it could be dangerous. Uh, 
you don't want to mess with the ground clearance and you don't want this heat. So I have found that on a 30 inch diameter tank, which is the 250s and the 330s and such, uh, about three inches is that sweet spot, taking all of those factors in consideration. So if we're an inch and a quarter up, uh, we need to go an inch and three quarters down to get our three inches. So this is an inch and three quarters right there. We'll put a mark, a bigger mark at inch and three quarters. And that's where I want to attach this to that. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. First step is going to be uh, hanging this from the, the crane. Uh, and I've done it with uh, jacks and transmission jacks and uh, uh, all kinds of precarious ways. Right now it just happens to be sitting on the, the rotisserie that I use to fill these. Uh, and I have found that hanging them, uh, either from an a engine hoist or something like that, uh, seems to work good. And we'll go through the process of uh, finding our center line. We've got a, a dimple right here that when we were building this, I pinged the dimple right there. And there should be, yep, there it is on the other side. So that's easy enough to find that center line. And what we will do is get this in position where this center line is sitting right on that area right there. And uh, we'll kind of weld that, or we will weld that on with a real good stable tack. Uh, get it kind of eyeball lined up straight, and then we'll uh, use a plumb bob coming out to get it perfectly straight. So that's, in a nutshell, the process that we're going to go through. Uh, and I will show you how we're going to mark the line once we get it in the right position. And uh, we'll go through every step of joining this firebox to the tank. So I'll get back with you in just a few. All right, so we've got our firebox hanging and uh, we need to come up to our one and three quarter mark, which is right here, and then make sure that it's level too. So um, it needs to go back on this side, about right there. And holy smokes, that looks pretty darn Good. We're not really concerned about being completely lined up at this point because we're going to be able to move it a little bit. We're only going to tack it here to hold it in place while we do the rest of the uh, maneuvering around. And remember, we're only putting it here just to make these marks, but we want to get it perfectly aligned with this tank. So the tank is perfectly plumb and it's perfectly level. I've double, double checked that and triple checked it. So as long as we get this uh, firebox perfectly level, we should be able to get this direction here fairly easy. And I'll show you how to do that. So that looks about it right there. I'm a little bit high. So I'm gonna come up right there. And that looks pretty darn close. So as long as we get in the ballpark right now and tack that, then we can do some fine-tuned maneuvering. So let me get this tacked up right quick. And it's actually going to be more of a weld than a tack because we don't want it coming loose, but we do want to be able to manipulate it a little bit. So that looks pretty good right there. put a little bit of pressure on it to hold it against that tank while I weld it. Now, now let's was welding some thin material just a minute ago, so my weld is a lot, a lot colder than I actually wanted it. But we're there. Now, since we're a little bit low on this end, we can very gently bump up, and bingo, there we are. Um, that is pretty darn close. 
uh, but it's not exactly perfect. So I'll pull that up and let you see that. It's not exactly perfect. So what I'll do, since one more click on the uh, the hoist is going to be more than I want, I'll take the uh, little floor jack right quick. Increase this well just a little bit to help hold that, and then we'll start working on our marks. Okay, we're going to hang a plumb bob off the end of this piece of pipe. And what I do is just, I use a, uh, a nice thick wall pipe that is perfectly straight, and I set it on top of the tank and just extend a straight line off of the tank so that I can hang a plumb bob out here and make sure that my center mark on the tank here is where it needs to be in this axis here. Uh, we've got it up and down and we've got it clocked just right uh, because we know that this door is level. And that's another, uh, another very important tip when you're doing this. Keep an eye on uh, your door to make sure that the, the pipe is clocked correctly. In other words, uh, it, it's spun in the right directions. And in this case, my door is perfectly level. Uh, if it were not, we would need to twist the tank just a little bit. Of course, this weld would stay here, but either this side would go down just a bit or that side would go down just a bit, just to kind of twist. So another reason you don't want to put a big weld there, but something substantial enough that's just gonna hold it uh, and allow you to make some tiny little adjustments and uh, my door is perfectly flat, uh, or at least the top of it is perfectly level. So uh, another tip, make sure that you keep an eye on that. I have seen uh, a lot of cookers out there um, where everything looks good, it's lined up this way, it's not sitting up and down, uh, but darned if the darn door's not cocked funny, and uh, you can even open the door uh, and it'll kind of close itself or if you open the door, it, it wants to open itself. So uh, just keep an eye on that. Make sure that your uh, firebox is clocked correctly. Uh, if you just get it in the ballpark, when you uh, do this weld here, you can uh, kind of tweak it up and, and back and then put you a tiny little tack on one side or the other. And that's what, that's what those two there are to kind of hold it in place. Don't put a lot because uh, our next step, uh, we're going to use these wedges to get this direction. So, uh, and that's the purpose of this piece of pipe right here. So our door is level. Uh, and we want to be able to hang this plumb bob right down through the center of that line. But we want to make sure that it also extends off of this line. Well, darn. Our hinges are sitting on top of that line, so it would be very difficult for us to extend that line directly out. Now, for a while I toyed with doing it with a laser, uh, but that got cumbersome because you can you can uh, introduce some errors if your laser is not exactly in line with the tank, then you can have some, uh, some problems that you're not really recognizing right off the bat there. I have found that the best way to do it is just hang a plumb blob, extend it out, uh, and what we're going to do to make sure we get over our line is very simple. Uh, we're just going to make a, uh, a little, and in my case, a wooden block. A wooden block with, uh, and I'll see if I can zoom in, with a hole drilled in it, just enough to go around uh, the pipe, and then a little uh, slit down there so that we can squeeze it tight with a little bolt and I have drilled a lot of holes here, so uh, depending on how far I have to adjust my hanging string, I can pick different holes. And in this one, uh, the pipe happens to be sitting very close to the center line, so I'm gonna use my closest hole and we'll see if that works. If not, I may have to drill one even just a little bit closer, but we'll find out here in just a minute. Uh, let me 
to snug that little bolt up. That's good enough. Now I'll stand back and look and see where my string is hanging. Okay, for the sake of clarity, I have removed the uh, strap so that we can see how that string lines up. I think that you can get the idea from that. Um, it's hard to tell with the camera because it does weird things with the angles, but uh, we're dead on the center line. So uh, what we're gonna do now is slide the pipe out, secure it with a strap, and dangle that plumb bob all the way down in front of my uh, center line, the vertical center line on the firebox. So. That's the next step. All right, so I've got our strap tightened down and I extended our little plumb bob out far enough to where it dangles freely. And uh, as expected, our tank is not gonna be perfectly in line. And I'll zoom in here in just a second, a second. But if you'll look, this line here, which goes all the way to our center line, is a little bit to the right uh, from at least your view of uh, our plumb bob line. And uh, most guys would just let that go. It's, it's not going to bother the performance of the, the cooker at all. Uh, but in, in my mind, uh, if you're going to do something uh, and you have the capability to do it right, go ahead and do it right. Uh, and this is very easy to do. We've got our one little pivot point right here and I have removed uh, the strap. So I'm going to be very, very careful because it's sitting on the jack and it's hanging on this well here. And we've got uh, about 350 pounds hanging here in this 3 8 inch. Uh, pipe, so um, we're going to be very, very careful. I, I never do this without the strap, but uh, when I was looking at the video, uh, the strap just makes things look so busy in here, you really can't see what's going on. So we're going to cross our fingers and hope that my little weld is sufficient there. And I'm going to keep my toes out of the way. So I just have a wedge uh, that I'm going to push that in that direction and you will probably see it before I do. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so you can see better. Let's see if we can get our camera lens lined up to the right position. That looks pretty good. Good. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm looking at the line on the tank right now and lining the camera lens up with it. So we want to move this line over in the same line with that line. If you, if you notice our string is blocking the view of this line, so we're perfect there. We just want to move this one over. Almost there. And gosh, that's, uh, oh gosh, that's close. And I would call that pretty darn perfect right there. Maybe one more. And that's about all we need to do right now, I think. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is put a, uh, a good little tack here and a good little tack here, and that'll keep that uh, from shifting anymore. And um, then we can go ahead and get all this out of the way for uh, drawing our line. So let me uh, put those tacks on. I'll get set up to uh, draw our line, and uh, I'll be right back with you. Okay, so for the moment that we've all been waiting for, the, uh, the whole reason that we have done all of this setup is to draw this line right here. Uh, if this were a square firebox, this would have been a uh, uh, five minute deal uh, and it would have been very easy just to make a straight line across here and then uh, you know cut it down here and, and it slides in. 
Uh, but with these uh, compound curves involved um, in our radius here, uh, things are a little bit more difficult. So this is what we have to do. Now I have taken just a piece of um, stick. This is a, a piece of balsa, uh, but you could use hardwood or anything you want. You could use a ruler, um, whatever you want to use. I like something that is about the same thickness as my piece of chalk marker there, or a you know welding white chalk uh, marker there, steel marker. So, and I have uh, ground that. I don't know if you can see that to a point on the bottom side. Remember, we don't want a uh, point in the center because that would raise our line up. We want to mark the very bottom of, um, or the very top surface of this, which would be the very bottom of our piece there. And I'll sharpen it probably twice throughout this process just to keep that line down at the bottom very, very crisp. So we know that our line is the top of where this is gonna be. In other words, it's gonna slip in under uh, that line right there. Uh, so uh, nothing to it. These lines here are simply to help me keep this stick kind of straight, right? Uh, I can use those as, as visual aids to help keep my stick from coming off because if your stick comes off, then you are putting that mark in an area that it doesn't need to be. Uh, so you want to keep this stick perfectly straight as you come down and as it feeds in. So not a whole lot to it. Uh, I'll go ahead and move the camera in. Uh, and just looking at our lines, I'm not even looking up here. I'm judging here on our lines. Uh, I'll go back and look at that later, but I wanna make sure that I'm running perfectly straight, coming down the hill, using my little guides as a reference. Oops, I got off just a little bit. And I'll go back and just make sure that that went straight. There's something right there. There it is, a piece of slag, a um, piece of spatter rather. Uh, and I'll just make sure that I'm marked in the right place. I think I'll lift it up in time to keep it from going off track, but. And get back in position here. And that looks pretty darn good. Just double check. And that looks good. And I drew it all the way to the weld, and I will probably stop about uh, an inch before the weld, but, um, and the reason is, uh, if I need to make some adjustments uh, when I'm grinding this, uh, I'll cut it with a plasma cutter and clean it with the, uh, the grinder. It won't take much cleaning at all. But if I need to make some adjustments, some tweaks to get us back plumb again, back here on the back side, I'll want some extra material here uh, so I generally leave myself about an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. I've never had to go more than about an eighth inch uh, further in to get it perfectly straight, but uh, I would rather go in than bring the other side out and, and develop a hole over there that I have to fill with weld and it just doesn't look right. So uh, that, looks, that looks very, very good there. I like that. That's a good mark. A uh, little spot right there that we missed. Shouldn't have any problem at all seeing that. I'll go ahead and do the other side, get all this out of the way, and uh, we'll get set up to cut that hole.
All right, let's see what that gets us. I went in in this corner uh, just a little bit to catch up to that side. our plumb bob up and uh, see what it looks like. I like that gap. That's a, a, that's a pretty darn perfect seam up here. Down here I open up to about, I don't know, maybe three sixteenths, uh, two sixteenths rather, about an eighth, three thirty seconds is what I meant to say. Uh, certainly uh, no, no problem for the welder. And this side is darn near perfect. So. Uh, I like that. I'll grab the uh, pole, get it set back up. Alright. That looks pretty darn perfect. Let me grab this. to check to make sure that our power box is clocked right. The uh, door looks pretty good, just eyeballing it, maybe down a little bit on this side, just the tiniest bit right there. That is perfect there. We're perfect here. We look perfect there. Give a couple of quick looks to see if we see anything obvious that doesn't look good. This corner looks good. We're nice there. Triple check our level. That looks pretty darn good. I like that. So, we'll check our tank, make sure our tank is black. And it is. We're a little bit high in the back now, but that right there does it. Right there. So, I could push down and put me a tack here, put a tack over there. Uh, and one up here, and that should be perfect. I don't want to move the uh, I don't want to move the winch right now because that's uh, that's just the tiniest little bit, and the winch winch move would be too much. Before we get carried away, let's triple check everything and stand back here. That looks pretty darn good. We're lined up on the corner of the tank, the edge up here. All that looks good. We're still seated up in here. We're clocked up and down right. I mean, turn wise, and we're in that exit axis just right. And we're closed up down here. So I like that. Let's put a few more tacks on it and uh, I'll go ahead and start getting it welded in place. Not that 
there's anything we can do about it. But that is perfect, so we're good. Okay, let's do a real quick walk through and see what we've got. Uh, of course, turned it up on its backside. It's uh, 180 degrees out or 180 degrees turned. So uh, it's precisely clocked to where it needs to be so that I can put the feet on the, the top. Uh, it's held in place by this chain. Uh, of course, this is the temporary eye that I used to spin it with. And it's held in place on this other side uh, with this strap. So uh, it, it really won't go anywhere. There's no real pressure on it now because it's perfectly at the top, right? But if it got rolling to one side, it would get awfully heavy because uh, you've got just about 410 pounds, I think, in that total firebox there. So uh, it would really swing uh, violently if it, if it got loose, but it can't get loose where it's at right now. Uh, so what we'll work on now is the moon shaped piece for the back of the firebox and of course these guys are not happy because whenever i'm welding they have to uh, sit in the little fence with their their shield up but anyway let's get working on the uh, yeah we're coming uh let's get working on the moon shaped piece all right let's make our back plate for the firebox this is uh, a lot easier than you're thinking it's going to be to get this uh shape uh, all we're going to do is take a piece of cardboard uh, or a whiteboard, whatever you got. Just ignore my blue lines. I put some cardboard together to make sure that we had enough. Um, and we're just going to draw all this out. Well, uh, the obvious question is, well, how are we going to get that radius? This radius to cut this out. Well, that's easy. We already have it, right? We've already rolled our uh, bands, which happen to be that exact radius. So all we're going to do is carry this over to the table. Set that right there, draw the radius, and then uh, come back here. So let me do that right quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, that's quick enough, uh, and we've got a really nice fit all the way around. Now, word of caution, uh, be sure that you mark your, uh, be sure that you mark your template uh, which side is which, okay? So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put an X on this side to know that this is my face side and when we cut this we're going to put a little corresponding mark to line it up to our tank because remember these things are not exactly round and if I shift this it doesn't fit as good. Uh, luckily I hit this one uh, just right uh, and it does fit real good and if I turn it around it doesn't fit as good over here. Uh, and that's because that tank is not exactly round right there. So uh, we just happen to, by luck, get it to where it's just right, right there. That's a really nice fit. And it's not quite level across the top, but that's where it, it likes to fit real good. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put a mark across the back.
just like that. Because my corner over here, I, I didn't pay attention, my corner over here is not quite as far down, and I still have a real good fit. I like that. So I'm going to redraw. Put some arrows to the line that I like. And there we go. Sorry about getting a little confusing there, but. Uh, what I had done was uh, I had lined it up here, so I would have had just a little bit of gap right there. Well, I could have made a note to myself to go ahead and cut a little bit longer on that side, but uh, I will probably forget. I've gotten so old now that I will forget that. So I will cut on this line, not that one. Remember, it's going to be the inside one on one side and the outside on the other. So uh, that's where that's going to go. And let me go get that cut out right quick. And there's our template. Let's go see what we have. And that looks pretty good. Gap right here. Let's see if turning it around helps us any. Seems to help a lot on this side. Yeah, so that's the way that we had it facing. Yeah, here's our edge. So that's uh, that's what we want right there. All right. So a, a quick note uh, for those that have purchased a um, firebox for me. Uh, I provide these back plates. Obviously, they're not welded on yet because you need to uh, be able to trim this. So it is separate with the, the fire box. And I make it just a little bit larger than this template right here. Uh, as a matter of fact, I leave this cut open. So I'll come down to about here um, and give you a lot more material because who knows how high you want your throat to be and I give you a little more material up here. Enough to match this radius uh, right here, but you won't, so you won't have to grind as much, but I don't know what everybody else's pipe is gonna be like. This pipe here is uh, pretty darn round. These tanks are not, of course. So uh, anyway, the, the takeaway from that is the pieces that you get for a back plate are a little bit oversized, and that's why, so that uh, you have more material than you need. And uh, it doesn't take long to grind this down uh, to make a nice, perfect fit, as you will see here in just a little bit. So, all right, let me go ahead and cut this out, and uh, I'll start prepping it for a, uh, a perfect fit there. Okay, let's see what we have here. And that looks pretty good. We're over. We're enough over on both of the corners so we're good uh, we've got just a little bit of maneuvering room here uh, we've got a lot cut off up here but that's fine we'll do that in just a little bit we'd rather have too much up here than not enough so what we're doing now is looking for high spots uh, we've got just the tiniest bit of gap here which is really nothing um, Kylie that's that's nothing but we're we're touching on this tip right here and if I take just that tip down a little bit it's gonna set this down. And I may want to take just a little bit right there. Uh, it's gonna to touch right here. Let's see what we're talking about. So our corner here is touching, holding this off. Probably uh, not even, an, oh, golly, just a little bit over a sixteenth of an inch. But if we can get it exactly flat, that would be even better. And when we drop this down, it's gonna to touch here and it's gonna to touch there. It's not touching yet, it's probably a 32nd or a 16th off, uh, but those are higher than these other spots. If you can see that high spot right there, um, we bring these down, it's gonna drop that down to basically nothing. So let me do that with the sander right quick.
right, so I've got just a little bit of rock, which, which is a good sign. Uh, that means we're only touching in one spot, which is usually at the top, and it looks like it's Oh God, that got rid of it right there. That's uh, that's pretty darn perfect right there. I like that. That got rid of this gap here, so we're good all the way around. We're, uh, God, we're if we're not touching, we're about a sixteenth in all places, and we've got good clearance here and all the way around here. That looks just right. So. What I'm gonna do now is put a reference mark right here, showing that that's where we like that. Uh, and I'll put another one right here and a corresponding up there on top. And this will be our primary right here. so that we know that we can put this back in the exact position where we like it. Uh, again, because this shape down here is not constant um, and we found a good spot for it. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, tack this in place in just a couple spots here and here and probably here and over there. And then I'm gonna take the big grinder, uh, the, the big grinder that I, I really don't like holding, but fortunately it hangs from the boom and it makes things a lot easier. And I'm going to take this down even with this. Uh, and it's just going to be a, a, a gentle tack, just enough to hold it in place while I do that. And then we'll pull it off and put our bevel around. Uh, of course, when I cut this tank out uh, on the, the pipe cutter, I put a bevel on there. So we're good to go with this side. We're just going to put a littlest bevel over his side of the uh, plate. And uh, then we'll weld it back on and be done with this. So I've got it ground down flat, and that's uh, uh, pretty easy to see right there. Uh, not a whole lot to uh, to glean from that, other than uh, I just I just grind it with the, the sanding disc until I get to where I touch both of these. Now what I'll do next is uh, just take this plate off and put me a little bit of a bevel here, uh, which is well prep, and uh, the same down there, and then I will go ahead and. Uh, I'll show you the other side while we're here. Uh, it's the same deal. Um, looks good. We've got good clearances all the way around. So uh, what I'll do is take that plate off. So what I'll do is take this plate off and uh, just weld prep it good and then put it back on and weld it up. Uh, there's not a whole lot to it, and I think this is as good a point as any to go ahead and end this episode uh, joining the firebox to the uh, cook chamber. Welding is, is kind of like watching grass grow, so uh, uh, there's no need putting you through that. But if you, uh, if you liked the uh, video, go ahead and hit like uh, and subscribe for more episodes coming out. Uh, the like and subscribe are incredibly, incredibly important for the algorithm, the YouTube algorithm that helps rank the, uh, the video and uh, make it easier for people to pull it up and, and see when they start searching. So uh, do me a favor and hit like and subscribe if you liked the video. The next episode will be uh, making the feet uh, and we're going to leave it in this position where it is exactly plumb uh, so that we can get our feet level and um, we'll, we'll make the feet short so that they can attach to either skids uh, a cart or a uh, trailer. Uh, I'm not sure which way the, the customer on this cooker wants to go yet. So uh, I'll see you in the next episode.